Therefore, when they have come together, they ask him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore to the kingdom? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or season which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Praise the Lord. Brethren, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. As long as it is not, we will continually have understanding. Praise the Lord. When you have understanding, when you understand the gospel, one, we said you will have faith in God. Two, when you have understanding, when you understand the gospel, you will be obedient to the Father. You will be obedient to the Father. The Great Commission, go ye all over the earth and preach the gospel. If you have understanding, you will realize how powerful that statement. You will obey it. You will go and preach. And he has, he has an addendum to that, to that era. In my name, you will do this. So what's happening? Why are Christians not, not, not living or living that life? Is it because they lack understanding of the gospel, of the message, of the errand, or the sender? Is it because of that? When you have understanding of the gospel, you will be obedient to the Father. One, you will have faith in God. Two, you will be obedient to the Father. Three, when you have understanding of the gospel, you will be bold and confident. We saw Paul preaching in the, in the synagogue. He was bold of the, the, the gospel he, 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 he is moving with. At the point he said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Are we ashamed of the gospel? Are we ashamed that ah, things are not working in my life? Let me just lay silent. Let me just say, let me not talk about it. Let me not say, say, you have to say the good job. Or have to say the believer. Brethren, let's be bold. And to be bold and confident, we need to deep, deep study. You can't get it all by just hearing, listening. You can't get it all. You need to study. Share. Share. Share the scripture. Ah, brother, I, 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 I heard it. I, I was going through the scripture. This is what it said to me. The brother saw this. Now, let me go. Also, that scripture, this is what it ministered to me. I don't shout that I don't. Share. Understand it. Get understanding. When you have understanding for, you will have joy. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. Now we are talking about the 70. These are, they, they are not on the 12, they are believers, and the Lord sent them out earlier. The Bible says in 17, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw it out fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Powerful. By the right now, we say powerful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you understand the gospel, you will have joy. The 70 they understood who sent them. And when they went, because of the understanding, there was results. They said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Brethren, the demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus Christ. We, 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 we should not be moved or fretting that ah, somebody will take my picture to somewhere and do this. He will go blind. There is power. The person will go blind or one big boy that is looking for, we are looking for job, begging him for employment or transaction. Will not say, boy, come, 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 let me tell you something. He will just see that guy crying and, and shake him, say, oh, who are you? Understand your power. You have given us authority. Jesus told them, Behold, I, 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 
I, I said, behold, I give, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing, nothing, brethren, nothing shall my enemies cross you. Not the economy, not science, not health, nothing. When we're coming, we saw that you brought it there, you showed on the video of the Susuriso girl. Out of 109 to survive. That girl, her beauty, as a she was 16 years right when that happened. You can imagine her beauty, everything is gone, consumed by fight of flesh. But her voice was the same. Her voice is not as ruffled as the face. Brethren, nothing shall by any means you. We can't question the Lord about the other ones that died, the other kids. But this girl survived. And when I was looking at her video, I'm like, God, you kept this woman for a testimony. Yes. She was all wrong. She's presently our old now, 28. She was just talking. I was looking at her. This kid is not what you will cherish. It's like, it's like, I can't describe it. Let me not use the wrong word. But her spirit was strong. She was just saying that people were crying. Nothing. Her soul was not hot. She was not broken. The body was scattered, but her soul was still standing strong. And I pray that that sister, that girl, will stand firm till the very end in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirit has subject to you. It's a discussion. We need to understand this. Today, you see a young believer goes to somewhere, prays, and the sick is healed. The dead is raised. Bam! The guy has touched his shirt. He will touch it. He will buy a suit. I say, yes, brethren, I pray that that soul rose. That, that layman was. The Bible says, do not rejoice in this. And you pray that something happens. Do not rejoice. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That is the reward. We need to understand this. God has given you and blessed you with the gift of prophecy. And you are, you are, you are so filled with it. Don't, don't, don't rejoice over it, my brother. If I tell you what's going to happen to you next week, eh? you will bless me with something. First, bless me with something. First. No, you see, first, bless me. I will tell you. You will start, even believers now will start shaking. I, I don't think, I don't think. Brethren, never relent. Do not rejoice in this. That the spirit has subject to you. All spirits are subject to us in Jesus' name. Yeah. But let's not rejoice. That's not the catch. The catch is our names are in heaven. Number five, when you understand the gospel, you will be watchful. When you understand the gospel, you will be watchful. Luke 22, from verse 34 to 36. Sorry, from verse, let's look at 39. 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, and, as he was accustomed, as he was and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. You know, he went to pray, and when he came back, he found them you know, sleeping. I think the second time. Then if you go to 46, then he said to them, okay, take it from 43, then the angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed most earnestly. Then his sweat became like great blood, great drops. Of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Pray the Lord. God was, Jesus was cautioning them. Forty, he, he warned them. He said, When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. They didn't understand. They thought they were just waiting for him. He was telling them, pray. This was before the denial of uh, Peter denied him. 
and before the, the, the whole strength, the whole uh, pain and agony of the Father, Jesus was praying. He understood what was about to happen. And he was telling them, pray that you do not fall into temptation. Who knows if they had prayed, if Peter had specifically had prayed, maybe another person would have been the one. Even though God had told the last time they came down, he said, Why did you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. We need to understand the gospel. When you understand the gospel, you will be watchful. You will be watchful. The Bible said, Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. When you understand the gospel, you will be watchful. Number six, when you understand the gospel, you will be born again. Yes, we are born again. But we really need to remain born again. Praise the Lord. And for those out there who are not born again, for them to really understand, if they understand, they must be born again. Interestingly, Nicodemus, John chapter 3, verse 3, walked up to Jesus in the middle of the night to inquire. And in that, John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The gospel is about Jesus. The gospel is about the saving grace of Jesus. And for you to, to have or partake in this gospel, brethren, we must remain born again. And if we are not born again, we must, Jesus will use that, use that word. Say, most I surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Unless, there's no other pattern. Unless one is born again, he cannot see. And the Lord must ask so much, so much question. And Jesus said, he said, do not marry that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is, so is every one who is born of the Spirit. We need understanding to grasp what the Lord Jesus is saying here. Let's not waver. This morning I was listening to while we were preparing to come to church. I was listening to the radio and um, I was like, Lord, you're talking to us about understanding and the gospel uh, program that was on. The lady said, the, the man said, in Zimbabwe, this is in Zambia, in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe, the government had a gold mine. And the gold man was condemned, abandoned. Nothing was happening there. So this group of investors came and met the government officials and said, Look, we want to take this gold man. And the government officials went in to have a meeting and said, Let's do let's, let's, how much are we going to prepare this gold man? And the old guy had said, If we're giving that gold man, it should not be anything less than $20 million. And then finished and came back to the person and said, Look, we'll give out the gold man, no problem. But you guys will pay $20 million. The investors didn't show any fear. They said, Okay, just wait, let's also have a meeting. They went in, had a meeting. They were shocked that the government will mention $20 million for the gold man. So they said, And what was it? These people don't have understanding. Okay, okay. They did the meeting and they came back and they told the government, no problem, we'll take the gold mine for $20 million, but we are going to give you that $20 million, we'll spread it for a number of years, 10 or 15 years. And the government said, no problem, no problem, but we'll pay a large sum first. And they paid that money. They renovated the gold mine, and in the first three months, they made $70 million profit. Understanding. Understanding. We need to understand our purpose in the kingdom. When you understand the gospel, you will know your value. When you understand the gospel, you will appreciate what God has put in you, no matter your age. God has planted in each and every one of us gifts. 
gifts. We need to use those gifts. No matter the circumstances, the society, the economy is so depressing. But we are not of the world. But we are in the world, so we will keep on fighting. That's why we have the assembly, we have the brethren. Understand that you have a purpose. Understand that you can do all things. Doing all things is not to, to go and uh, jack trade or go to government and start going to CBK just to say I can do all things. In the kingdom, understand when the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Understand what it means. God is faithful. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. As long as we understand, He will do miracles in our life in Jesus' name. Yeah. He will continually strengthen us. He will continually uphold us. Let's remember that. He will continually hold us and keep us strong. Let's not get carried away by every wind of doctrine. Let's not get carried away. Let's always remember that God is always faithful. Let's be careful and content for the faith. Let's be strong in our pursuits of the things of the kingdom.